now call to order April 19th, 2021, meeting of the New Candy Independent School District Board of Trustees, current time 6.03. Let the minute show a quorum is present with all members in attendance. Please rise for invocation to be given by Ms. Sharp. Remain standing for Pledge of Allegiance and Honor Texas flag. Be led by Ms. Brickle. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to um, come together tonight to work for the best interest of our students. God, I ask you um, to be present in the meeting tonight and give us wisdom as we make decisions and our busy budget that's going to be honored by what happens. Lord, I uh, thank you for the teachers and the staff of the district. Help us to move forward to bring glory. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 The to the Republic of the Ukraine, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one community. Item two on the agenda is the TASBO award presented by Miss Tracy Ginsburg. Hi, Hello. how are you? Thank you, Paul. We appreciate all you do for us. Don't leave a light on. He'll call you. <laughs> <coughs> Item three on the agenda is emergency preparedness update presented by Mr. Larry. Mr. Batchelder. Really the big takeaway is if you've seen emergency management in the 
Mr. Calvert pulled together a group of people to sit down and talk about this image that we were all looking at, trying to figure out, okay, what's, what is the plan? And through that, the incident management team was born, if you will. We kind of assigned some roles and responsibilities, and we hit the ground running immediately um, and, and created plans for not just before landfall, but after landfall, and eventually what we need to do in the event of a shelter situation from the county judge so we were able to implement those processes very quickly because we all banded together and started working through that process you know communication was another thing that really came up in that and so when you look at a team and you're trying to decide uh, how you're going to communicate forming a, a formalized communications chain and then assigning specific roles and responsibilities to different positions allows for each person to function within the team in a very specific way, all working together for the same common set of objectives. I've been blessed to have the opportunity to share incident management concept in a couple of different forms, whether it's in the Texas School Safety Center Conference or through TASBO, actually working with other folks like myself and other districts to develop a course and teach a course about how do you get the you know personalities and the fit to each role so that you can take, take into account the natural tendencies and talents that you have. And so we have an incident management team. If something were to happen right now, we have people that we can call and go into an emergency operations, and we have a process that we can start seeing our way out of the storm. And it doesn't matter what the storm looks like or where it's going. It just matters that we have a team and a process ready to respond. So how do you get that team ready? We've already touched a little bit on communication. We, now we know who to call. We know when to call and who's going to determine an emergency, but formalizing that team and getting them the training that they need so that they have the confidence to step into that role out of their normal everyday role and be able to serve the district in a, in a little bit different way. Um, and so we've got folks that have been individually trained and they have access to me 24 seven. Hey, Paul, I'm not real sure about this part of my role. Can we sit down and talk about it? Absolutely. And so we continue to foster that so that they have the confidence to be able to respond. Uh, <clears throat> and then exercising that knowledge and exercising the uh, camaraderie and the team building, if you will, through a tabletop exercise. I like to surprise them with an issue and let's, let's work through that. And so it's really through Mr. Calvert's leadership and the ability to set some objectives and then letting the team go to work and kind of keeping a hand on the steering wheel and watching us all respond to different types of information. We do that in a practice situation because that's what's going to happen in the real thing. Something that you plan for is going to create a surprise and now we need to make adjustments. And I've always been a stickler in the classes that I teach. It's not about the plan, it's about the team because you can always make another plan. You can always adjust the plan. You can change it. And so it's really more about the team and being able to look that person in the eye and say, okay, hold on, that's, that's not what we were planning, but we can make some adjustments off of that. So with this team, we're having the ability to do that. We started a safe and secure committee actually back in January of 2016, which is about three years prior to St. Bill 11, and when it came out and really formalized a lot of different things. And so... I just want to introduce a few folks tonight and give them an opportunity to share their relationship with New Caney ISD so that they can, you can see kind of what we've been working on kind of behind the scenes a little bit and illustrate where we're headed. So with that, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Mike Rogers with Montgomery County Sheriff's Office and ask him to share a little bit about uh, the relationship with New Caney ISD. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
<clears throat> um, my notes are on a sticky note. But as you can see, we're a member of the Safe and Secure Committee School. We take an active an active role in that. Um, on the way before the meeting, I was having a conversation with Chief Wooten. He informed me that y'all were having some catalytic converter theft in unsecured areas of the school the school vehicles. So I just fired an email out to to assist with nighttime patrol for that. Um, when he has the school zone issue, he, he calls me. I assign deputies to work those school zones. Um, we're also a member of the Handle with Care team, which is a program started by the district attorney's office, in which we will send, if we come across a child that's been either have physical abuse or sexual abuse, or the parents have been arrested, or they have some type of emotional problem or, or something going on in their home, and we're aware of it, we will fire the school district uh, a Handle with Care, or it's New Caney ISD at Handle with Care, and we'll just put the students in. And what that's designed to do is to give the teachers and the counselors and the principals, hey, something traumatic has happened to this child. Keep an eye on him. If he needs help counseling or things along those lines, then, then that's what makes the school aware of the issue in case he starts acting out with the child support. Um, we also work with Safe Harbor, which uh, children with physical and sexual abuse, they go to Safe Harbor for a one-time interview so they don't have to tell their story repeatedly. Uh, and it's just a simpler, easier process for the children. Uh, I know Chief Wooten's guys, they're, they're quick to work an accident in front of the school for us during, uh, before school, during, or after school when, when the traffic is heavy. They'll get out there and they'll work accident for us and return. We do things for them. But we have a great relationship and, and uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. Chief. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Chief Carter Johnson from Porter Fire Department and Battalion Chief Ray Vaden. Thank you. Uh, being able to work with Paul and Chief Wooten on their public safety initiatives, especially on the uh, Safe and Secure Committee, uh, Chief Vaden and I both represent parents on that committee. We're actually not functioning as the members of Porter Fire Department. We, we lend our expertise when we can, but our, tr our true traditional role on that committee is parents, and as parents, we're thankful that y'all are doing this type of activity. Then when it comes to the public safety side, working with Chief Wooten and Paul, we've done anything from uh, had the transportation department come out and see how fast a fire burns on a school bus. So some of y'all might not have been on the board at the time. Y'all actually donated a bus to y'all's transportation committee, and we burned it. And after before we burned it, we put smoke in it to show how, fa how much time you have to evacuate a bus. And everybody was quite surprised by how fast the fire was spread on a bus. So we're able to do unique opportunities like that. Uh, another good transportation deal that we've done is whenever we need to evacuate, our high water vehicles are great at going into deep water, getting people out or our boats. But if we had to drive our high water vehicle from the victim's house all the way back to a shelter location, we'd be wasting so much time. So typically what we do on a, on a disaster is we call Buchanan ISD and say, hey, we need buses. And they'll bring us a bus to a dry land spot, what we call an island and high water vehicle will pick people up in the flood, drop them off at the island, and the bus takes them the rest of the way. And these are the type of partnerships that make our job so much easier that we are able to rescue hundreds more people than opposed to if we had to keep driving the high water vehicle from the uh, flooded spot to the um, shelter locations. We've done transportation emergencies. Uh, when your staff received COVID vaccines, uh, our staff was here administering COVID vaccines along with uh, the Montgomery County Hospital District and Public Health. We've worked uh, festivals for inside the district or on district property where we've implemented that incident management team. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a couple of fires over the years. Uh, most recent fire, I believe, was uh, Porter High School in the cosmetology uh, department. Uh, but showing up and seeing familiar faces and reaching out with Scott in the alarm department is, as you notice, I'm mentioning these guys by name because we work with them and the relationship's great. When we have challenges, it's easy to pick up a phone call and say, hey, Paul, we need to work on this or, or vice versa. And, and it's truly the relationship. It's been an honor to work with your public safety team. Yeah, the only thing I'd really add to that and, and just elaborate on is our, our experience with the uh, incident management team. I think it all started probably 2017 with a little class in the is that a coach's room or umpire room, rep room or something over here. Um, a little four hour deal and, and a few players from within your district had a vision to say, 
if our day, if we ever have the worst day possible within our district, how do we react? How do we respond? Um, and it started with, you know, how do we plan for Friday night football game? And how do we, how do we respond to an incident within an event? So we know there's a game. We can plan for that. But, but what happens if we have to call audible in the middle of it? Um, and I think it's probably been four, four and a half years now that of continuous growth and, and so forth. And during that time, like Chief Johnson said, we've had the opportunity to run command post here in this room for football games and, and now at the natatorium next door. And we've been in the press box for a rock the ranch festival out, out in the backyard here or the back parking lot. Um, and I, I think it's a true testament to leadership of your employees, your staff and your board. Uh, to have the vision to uh, allow something like that to take place. Here. So we just want to thank y'all for that opportunity. Mr. Turner, anything you'd like to say about the Safe and Secure Committee since you've been on it? Yes, sir. Um, I mean, so it's important that a lot of things that we do, that you guys do is behind the scenes, and that's okay. Um, you know, and I know society and the people sometimes think that, that that we just get together and decide on how we're going to do something. They don't realize that we're planning all the time. Um, so, again, it, it's okay that not everybody knows all the things that we do, but it's important for them to know that we do do them, that we are planning. Uh, we are trying to look at different scenarios, and we're trying to be as prepared because, again, things happen. And we can only be as prepared as we are, but if we're all on the same page, the communication is there. Obviously, the most important thing we can do is communicate with each other to be able to get the need there and obviously to take care of the kids because that's what, exactly what we're doing it for. So, I mean, I definitely appreciate the work that you guys put in and, and everybody else that, that, you know, Carter and those guys that aren't even, they're just here as parents for us just to help us. But it sure is nice having the chief of police, to be able to pick, I mean, chief of uh, the fire department to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, we got a problem, and he's here. So is Ray. You know, they're here. They're, they're invested in our community, and that's important. So I think Beth had something she wanted to add for sure no i was really excited when mr turner asked if i wanted to serve on this committee because i also share a passion for school safety i mean obviously we are charged with educating children but we cannot do that if we can't also provide a safe and secure learning environment for them and i speak for myself but i think everyone would agree that no one it's not lost on us that we are entrusted with the safety of sixteen thousand kids each day so to be able to work in concert with other agencies and be able to call on chief johnson or Lieutenant Rogers. Um, I think that's a great partnership. I'm really excited about the future of the committee and working together for the betterment of the district. Because like Chief Johnson was saying, like, hey, if we can lend our bus, because it's not a new penny bus, it's a taxpayer bus. And so how can we work together to make sure that we're benefiting the community as a whole? And I think eliminating those barriers and working together is a win for new Canaan. Mm -hmm. well, uh, uh, Mr. Seals couldn't be here tonight, but he and Darren Hesser with Montgomery County OEM, and I just want to give them an honorable mention because there have been plenty of times where we call each other at, you know, crazy times at night or morning to, to try to figure out what's going on and try to ascertain what's, who needs help where. And so those gentlemen are on the west side of the county, but they have a, you know, a passion for us on this side too. And so I appreciate them and just wanted to make sure that they get acknowledged here tonight as well, even though they couldn't be here. In the spring of 2018, we had a couple of different um, things happen. Uh, I think they're probably most referred to as Parkland and Santa Fe. And it, you know, created an opportunity for us to really try to do some things here within the district. Um, the county started with an active threat response protocol, and they specifically were looking for getting all of the school agencies, all the responding agencies together for a countywide plan that we could all sign off on, on what the uh, response would look like and some of the structure for that. And so as a result, we we're able to be a part of that planning process for the county. And so that active threat response protocol was something that they drove from the county and then we kind of launched from there and started with a, a more school-based approach for um, what we would do here in New Caney ISD. And it was kind of a four phase approach. We started with badges, doors, and supervision. And then we were able to go around and kind of introduce this um, new active threat response protocol for the district, ACA, acknowledge, choose, and act, where the teachers can start to try to choose what's, what's going on based off of the information they have at the time. Um, in order to really bring it all the way home, we had an ACA training video where we actually, you know, produced a little training video showing our kids different ages from second grade 
all the way to high school kids, implementing some techniques that people could use in the event of an active threat response. And so what you see is a snapshot of our second graders following through with some of the techniques that they can demonstrate in order to you know, respond to a situation under the leadership of their teacher and under the guidance of their principal, they're able to implement these processes. And now we have things that we can do should that sort of thing happen here. We've moved into the testing phases of that. Obviously with COVID, we're, we're kind of uh, backed off a little bit on that, but the reality is that not only do we have this part, but we also have the reunification part that's been a, a big part of you know, also planning for this. And we started planning with student services very early on and creating a reunification division, developing the site, what it would look like, where we would go, who would we call, what kind of supplies do we have prepared and ready to go. And so we have a plan for how we're going to do that. And eventually we will work through testing different aspects of the reunification, whether it's through a tabletop scenario where we're just kind of talking about it through the room to smaller functional exercises where we test different pieces, maybe the transportation piece or the setup of the site piece. And once we get through all of those, the goal would be to do a full scale exercise and put all the pieces together and run through a scenario in the event that we had to say, let's move 500 kids from this point to this point and make sure they all go home safely using the reunification process. It's a huge undertaking, but I think it's something that we can look to in the future to try to continue to foster. And it's something that pending COVID, we would have done a little, you know, we would be a little bit further along. But again, it's one of those, you, you deal with what's on your plate and then you just keep progressing as you go forward. So. Everybody remembers the May floods. We almost have two different May floods that we can talk about. But most recently in 2019, you know, we had several people that were uh, landlocked into facilities. Roads were impassable. And through what we were able to do that night, we were able to see that, you know, really people were functioning on different campuses and we were working together and communicating all through the night to make sure that kids got home. You know, at 715, we still had over 4,000 kids in schools, along with staff, teachers, and parents are trying to figure out how kids are going to get home. And everybody really banded together and communicated a uh, little bit by little bit. And we started whittling away that number. You know, at 9.30, we had still a 1,000 kids, but by 5.45, we were driving the last kids home so that everybody got home at some point. And it, it's a very unique scenario. And one of the things that we learned was, you know, having an emergency food stash where we can, you know, go in. If, you, if you've got to be locked in a facility, you should be able to grab some food and feed some kids. And so that was one of the great things that we were able to do. And now... That kind of information that we learn from these experiences lives in an app uh, that we call Crisis Manager, and it's in an incident management handbook. And the idea is, is that a principal could pull out their phone and open up this app and look through different scenario-based things and what is the current guidance from New Caney ISD. It's meant to be a living document that grows as we learn from different experiences, but it's not a three-ring binder on the shelf that you've got to go to a specific spot. It's on a device that everybody carries every day. And so the idea is, is that we have something from there. And I would be the first one to tell principals, look, this is a breathing document and you are the ones that give it life. So let, if you see something when you're evaluated that we need to make changes, then let's make changes. And so part of my charge is constantly looking at that and listening to what they have to say and making changes and adjustments so that they have the most up-to-date plan um, all the time, which is a really unique feature of that. They can't open an out-of-date plan. It has to update before they can do it. So even if they've never touched it in two years, they'll still get the most up-to-date information before they can even look at anything. Next, we had Tropical Storm Imelda. Um, and this one was a little bit unique because when your day starts at 2.45 in the morning um, and it's not looking good, you've got to make some quick decisions fast because the district wakes up pretty early in the morning. You know, we have child nutrition that gets on the road and buses that are going to pick up kids. And if you're trying to decide what to do and how high is the water going to go and what's it look like from the sky, there's, there's a lot going on. And so, again, this is where the team is the most important part because while I may go talk to a sheriff's deputy at East Fork Bridge and get some important information while I'm talking to the county, it's really the ability to be able to call Mr. Calvert and say, hey, this is kind of what I'm hearing, and my gut's telling me that the water's going to be here whether we like it or not. And so on this day, we were able to 
not have school, not put kids in buildings. And I just want you to take a look at this image of New Caney High School at a quarter to 11. And this was just one of them, but I, I'm here to tell you that is feet of water in that parking lot. You could not see a curb anywhere. And we were able to avoid that, again, because of the team approach, because of the communication that we had in place, the relationships we had with folks throughout the county, and we were able to make some decisions that kept people home and safe on that day. And then we moved to the current situation. You know, I've said team a lot, and I'm going to say it a lot in this slide, because there's not a single person in this room or department in this district that has not contributed to the success of our management for COVID-19. And just to be a part of that and work through some of the unique scenarios that come up as a result of that you know most emergency managers are you know that are that are working in the district and the people i talk to that nobody put pandemic at the top of the list of things to plan for and so we were all working together you know whether it was within the district or with your relationships that you made outside of the district to figure out the best way to advise and work through and, and really just pull together and we were able to accomplish so many things and are still accomplishing so many different things so I just want to highlight that it really took every single employee doing whatever they could and being willing to think outside the box and do something that they never had to in a landscape that we'd never even dreamed of. So I'm just grateful to be a part of that team. And with that, I just want to say thanks and um, appreciate everything that y'all do for the guidance uh, to give us where we're able to do what we're do because of what you guys give us the charge and like Mr. Turner said I appreciate the opportunity to kind of come and highlight maybe a few things from behind the scenes and Mr. Calvert's leadership's definitely helped all of this come to fruition we wouldn't be where we are today without his input and without his guidance he sets the objectives and then we go to work and that's the way it'll stay thank you very much thank you Paul thank you item four on the agenda to take appropriate action on agreement for the delinquent tax collection services for Limebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson, after having uh, produced adequate notice as required by Section 2254.01036 for the Texas Government Code for authorizing the President of the Board of Trustees to execute as agreement presented by Mr. Prey. How are you? Let's do it. Oh, okay. Alan, you gonna run this tonight or what? Yeah, we okay. got it. Thank Let's you very it. much uh, for letting us uh, work with the district. It's been a pleasure working with you guys. Y'all are a fantastic example throughout the state of Texas for what a district should be. Uh, so we enjoy the opportunity to continue working with y'all over the next coming years. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the agreement delinquent tax collection service for Services for Linebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson LLP after having pr provided adequate notice as required by Section 2254.1036 for the Texas Government Code and authorizing the President of the Board of Trustees to execute as said agreement. Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. No, the motion is approved. Item 5 on the agenda, take action on uh, approving agreement with Linebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson LLP as being fully qualified as a special counsel to provide all legal services necessary to collect unpaid delinquent valorum taxes as provided in section 6.30 of Texas Property, Texas, Texas Property Tax Code provided by Allen? Yes. All right. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> We're good to go. All right. Thank you. We got to get you the mic. That's just how it works. <laughs> Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve agreement for Linebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson LLP as being fully qualified as special counsel to provide all legal services necessary to collect unpaid delinquent ad valorem taxes as provided in Section 6.30 for Texas Property Tax Code? Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, the motion is approved. 
Item six on the agenda is open forum. We have one signed up. Ms. Hensley, where are you at? Oh, come on. How you doing tonight? So we got to read our open forum statement. I know, right? So that's you know that's, that's I'm going to start a conversation starter. Okay, which, I'm gonna, by the way, you were supposed to have one with me because you told me not to talk about something at the last meeting. Said we would have okay, a private I need to start. So you got to let me finish first. Sure, go ahead. So I'll respect your time, but you'll respect mine. Absolutely. That's how this works. If not, then we won't be able to move any Absolutely. further. Absolutely. I'll do what I need to do, and then you're going to do absolutely. what you do. Absolutely. Deal? Deal. So when I speak, then I'll give you the floor. You want me to say absolutely okay. again? Board okay. encourages comments of citizens of the district or employees. Anyone wishing to speak, either as an individual or representative of a group, may do so at this time. The board asks the comments be limited to no longer than five minutes. Remember, the board may not discuss any issues that are not posted on the agenda. Is If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board will defer discussion until appropriate time during this meeting. In addition, the board will adopt complaint policies that are designed to secure at lower administration levels. Our prompt and equitable resolution complaints and concerns, our policies are always listed at newkennyisd.org. You may go ahead and begin. Okay. Uh, five minutes uh, starts now, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay. And I did want to request more than five minutes because five minutes to me is not a conversation. That isn't even enough time to talk about stuff. Okay, second thing, or first thing, actually, because uh, the five-minute thing was up to, I, I don't remember. Anyway, she's got a thing going on me back there. But um, you promised me a conversation. You asked me not to talk about something, Mr. Turner, and afterwards, I never heard from you. Mr. Mixon, you told us, not very kindly, that the only reason that we were going to continue masking in this uh, district was because of possible funding. I've done a lot of looking into that. We're not losing any funding whatsoever if we take these kids and, and teachers out of math. In fact, if um, you look around you, where they go, there's quite a few people that have already done that. Tarkington issued like a one statement thing. They were like, we don't care. Wear them, don't wear them. We just really don't care. And honestly, this isn't this school property? I don't see a single mask. And I've seen all of, almost all of you out in public. Nobody's wearing a mask. I'm still saying, why are we still keeping a mask mandate? We have 100-degree weather coming next month. I guarantee it. Y'all were saying last school district meeting that y'all wanted to pay the good teachers to stay here. Not thinking putting them out in 100-degree weather on a parking lot with kids is going to keep them here. Tarkington may get them. Oh, people are dying to go to Tarkington. I can introduce you to people that are leaving New Caney to go to Kingwood. Hmm. Get these kids out of these masks. This is ridiculous. It's about to be 100 degrees outside. And I looked through y'all's oath. It, you said that you were going to follow the Constitution. And then I looked over here at what your responsibilities are. There's not a single thing that says y'all are responsible for kids' health. And I did look. None of y'all are authorized as health care representatives. Why are we keeping these kids and these students, I mean, students and teachers in masks? Why? You're not losing any funding. What's the problem? And I wasn't really crazy about this letter that I got um, from the superintendent's office saying, New Caney does have a complaint policy in place that are designed to remit. People, when I go into your schools and the policies are different from school to school, that's not an issue for me to go to that school and talk about. That's an issue to call Mr. Calvert's office. And my issue was that I call his office. I never get to speak with him. I never got any follow-up on being here last week or the last meeting. I wasn't treated real great. And everybody seems real happy to talk in here and spend a lot of money, but, you know, apparently we're concerned about funding, and nobody wants to talk to the crazy old lady at the last meeting that brought all the health stuff, all the scientific stuff on why it is so awful to mask children. Not one single person came and asked, and nobody still cares. Y'all have not called me, Ms. Turner, you haven't, I, mean, I know you and Mr. Mixon. That's not okay, and that's not how you run a school board. The next affidavit that you get is not something that you can ignore. You guys have taken an oath of office. It is, it is from the Constitution that you get that. If you're not going to uphold it, you have to, you have to leave your office. That's why we have so much overreach in this country, because nobody ever tells people that anymore. We want to tell each other what a great job we're doing. 
yes, we're all doing such a great job. But the problem is, is we're not having conversations like this. And nobody wants to call anybody out anymore. Get the kids out of the mask. Get the teachers out. Somebody's going to end up suing this school district. The first one that hits the ground, I guarantee you, is going to be in court wanting $100 million. You know that's what's going to happen. This is ridiculous. I don't need the whole five. Thank you, ma'am. Item 7 on the agenda is closed meeting. The board will now meet in closed meeting under authority of Texas Government Code 551.074 for the purpose of personnel matter. In Government Code 551.071 for attorney consultation. In Government Code 551.072 for deliberation regarding the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Any action as a result of closed session discussion will take place after the board reconvenes. Current time is 640. The board ends its closed meeting at 810. Item 8 on the agenda is superintendent's report. Sir, just have an introduction tonight. Um, this Amar Antos. Hope that was right. I've been butchering it for a year, but I'm going to get there. Um, she is uh, replacing Mr. Steve Freeman, who is about to start enjoying his retirement as our executive director of HR. So, uh, Ms. Amar Antos, you want to stand up? Y'all already know her. She's current director of HR, but she's going to be uh, attempting to fill those shoes being left by Mr. Freeman. So, appreciate her, what she's doing now, and looking forward to what she's going to do for us in the future. Perfect. Item 9 on the agenda is uh, reports and proposals from board members. Anybody have anything? Item 10 on the agenda is consent calendar consisting of consideration of, of minutes, consideration of financial report, consideration of personnel report, and purchasing report. Are there any other questions or further discussion on that matter? Is there a motion to approve items on the consent calendar? Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposes none. And the motion is approved. Item 11 on the agenda is the consideration of the approval of CPR number 31 for the offsite uh, roadway improvements to Kingwood Place Drive at Sorters McClellan Road as required by the City of Houston. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I move that we table this motion. Yes, ma'am. We'll be tabling item 11. Thank you. The motion has been moved and seconded for tabling item 11. Item 12 on the agenda is consideration of the approval for the interlocal agreement to join the Texas School Health Benefits Program presented by Amarit, Mem, Amarantos. Amarantos. Ms. Amarantos. We're going to get it right. It's okay. R.M. Toast. 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 Hey, that's it. There you go. That's it. Amarantos. Amarantos. So tonight, like you said, we are presenting information about the option for an alternate medical plan for our employees. And just a little bit of history, I know that you guys have kind of talked about it or heard a little bit about this probably at one point. Um, like many districts in Texas, um, New Caney elected uh, TRS medical coverage back in 2002. That's what everybody was doing. That's pretty much the only option. And once you opt in um, as a district with TRS, you can't opt out. Okay. So we're, 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 we're kind of stuck and we're moving on with TRS and that gives our, our employees less options okay but for a while now many districts have been seeking a way to offer an alternate medical plan um, to their employees and obviously that would be still alongside trs medical plan being an option because we always have to offer that and so because new caney isd um, has already worked to amend the language in our district of innovation plan like a lot of districts are doing right now this allows us to explore that alternate plan that we've been wanting to offer our employees. And again, it would just be, you know, offering them this alternate plan. So just quickly to kind of talk about the why, you know, why would we do this? You know, it is a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of legwork. It's a lot of information. 
to kind of do to offer this. It's not just, you know, we just say it and it's done. So the reason why we really would go through this kind of work and this kind of really good work for our employees is we really feel that an alternate medical plan offerings will greatly benefit the district and its employees by decreasing monthly premiums, out-of-pocket health care spending, increase member health and well-being, while also providing the tools to help them to focus on their health needs and have those opportunities as options. So really, in a nutshell, it's always our goal to provide an affordable health care option for all of our employees. Um, we have, you know, obviously dedicated teachers, dedicated administrators, support staff, and we want them to be able to concentrate on all the wonderful work that they do, um, providing the support um, that they do for our kiddos and let us do the legwork and the hard work of giving them that extra support from a health um, care um, option. So that's a little bit of a nutshell. I have Ms. Jackson here with me also because um, you should have, I think, an extra uh, sort of a table that really outlines a little bit in more detail um, maybe some options in terms of premiums that we would pay now versus premiums if the employee opts into this alternate plan. And the actual alternate plan or the company that we would be moving forward with is the Texas Schools Health Benefits Program. So that's who we've been working with. That's uh, where all the legwork has really come in. And so, you know, again, this is all about giving our employees an option and this would be the very first time that they actually have an option and so um we're at the forefront of being able to um, offer this something also to know i believe um humble isd is um you know which one they, they utilize they did not elect they, they elect the university okay benefit. so like we we definitely want to be able to kind of get out there be the forefront you know have this opportunity because this is something that is brand new. This has only been an option for about a year and a half, and that is only because, I mean, to be quite honest with you, it's really truthfully finding a loophole in the District of Innovation language. And just to keep that simple so we don't go into that, that truthfully is why um, we're able to sort of navigate through this as a, again, it's an, it's an opportunity as an offer. El Paso ISD is one of the first ones that has gone this direction. So again, we don't want to be left behind. We want to be at the forefront. And this is all about offering what we can to our employees. Um, because, you know, like you know, insurance goes up every year. And insurance becomes more and more expensive. And as a school district and all these wonderful things that we're doing, we're not able to even offer an, an, an option. And now we, we, we are. We're, we're able to explore that. So that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. The pricing that you have on, on these options, is that uh, dependent upon uh, participants in the program? It is not. They said it didn't matter what participation we Great. got. That would be our rates. Um, of course, that is without the contribution. So it is just going to be $325. And we're comparing those to this year's active care rates. We don't have next year's active care rates, but we can rest assured they will They're go up. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So I believe we'll see even a bigger difference. What is the coverage company? Excuse me? What are the companies offering? So HealthSmart is the physician network. It's a very kind of innovative, different plan where it only has a physician network and a prescription network. There is not a hospital network. Basically, better say they kind of go out to bed. So you call, it's a one-stop shop. You call a care coordinator. They get with your surgeon. They find out what procedures you're having done. They contact the hospital, and they negotiate a price. You pay just the copay. So you can have knee replacement. You can have all these surgeries that some of our employees are not able to have right now by paying a $500 copay to the facility and a $100 copay to the physician, and you're done. What about like emergency room? Emergency room, you can go to any emergency room. You pay a $500 copay, and that is it. And the physician network, is it? It's HealthSmart. Um, it is one of, supposed to be one of the largest networks, but once they, we sign up or agree to do this, they will come out and kind of start um, going through the area, contacting the local doctor, seeing, you know, making sure that... No, and I had not either, but it is a, uh, supposedly one of the larger. It's kind of, I think it's an old network, so a lot of physicians may not even know they're on it or might have used to been on it and not now. So that's one of the things they offered to do is to come out, kind of go through this area and get with the local doctors. Wendy, aren't you 
Aren't you a physician? Yeah, Aren't we, you we, a we appreciate your professional <laughs> advice. Be careful. It is out of the box thinking in terms of the way insurance works. This would be completely different than the way TRS yeah. medical works and all of those things. But again, it is one of those um, ideas that we want to explore just as an option. We know that it's going to really land on our shoulders in terms of the way in which we educate our um, employees, give them the information that they need to make, you know, an informed decision. And we know that that number will grow. Yeah. I think that the first year people are going to be a little bit scared. And then once they keep continuing, and that's what's happening to the other districts who are utilizing. Today there's no option. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no, there's no option. option. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, and we're one of the only professions that we, we, we kind of get stuck in this kind of situation where, I mean, you're just, you got to have your insurance. And we, we basically have a, a range of employees. And we want all of our employees to feel that this insurance is, um, you know, compatible and, um, you know, can be easily accessed in it's, terms yeah, of pricing. It's, and it's not even. It's really not that way right now. Yeah, it's not even just the premiums. You know, if we, you know, the employee only rates are really not that bad, but they afford their premiums, then they're stuck with these high deductibles and these, you know, co-pays and maximum out-of-pockets, and they're continuously paying. Their co-pay plan is a very unusual plan that the co-pays go towards the deductible. It's 3500 and then you're done. And, I mean, just to have a surgery for $600, that's very unusual to be able to just, I mean, believe me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they constantly are hitting you. And um, one of the long-term goals is where we are now with TRS Active Care, trying to get our claims history is almost unheard of. We paid last year $2,000. We got very minimal history. And we cannot go out into the uh, network and try to get quotes with a fully funded insured because they won't quote us based on our history because we don't have any. So one of the options we're looking at is long term is, you know, we stay with this program for a couple of years, we get some good history, and then possibly able to get some good rates, especially if our claims history comes out to be, you know. So it's no additional cost the to wellness. the district. It's no additional cost to the district. We're just providing no, our employees with other options. Yes, sir. I like it. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for doing that for their employees. Yeah. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the interlocal agreement to join the Texas Schools Health Benefit Program? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, <laughs> a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, none. The motion is approved. Item 13 on the agenda will be taking no action this evening. We'll be moving on to item 14 which is to consider adoption of the resolution authorizing administration to approve and execute certain easement dedications and plats concerning district real property presented by Mr. Calvert. Yes, sir. This is an update to the resolution y'all formally approved. Uh, the only change to it is basically a change to my title. Previously, it said deputy superintendent. Changing that to say superintendent uh, has the authority to negotiate all those things that are listed on the action item. Perfect. You're the new superintendent? Yeah. You go, okay. I'm just making sure. Making sure you're good. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the administration to approve and execute certain easement dedication and plats concerning district real property? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The opposes none. The motion is approved. There being no further business. The meeting is adjourned at 8.23.